All right. Cool. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs> all three of you. Um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about CMake. Um, and everyone here is, knows about Roveda, so I don't need to do the Roveda spiel. But this is for Roveda. Yay! Okay, so um, I'm actually adapting this from another thing, so we're not going to do all the things that are on here. But we're going to do uh, a brief overview of like the point of CMake, uh, why it exists, and like the basic facts about it. And then we're going to spend almost all the rest of the time doing like a code example, uh, looking at some real CMake and writing some real CMake. Um, so all right, yeah, let's just dive in. So what is CMake? It's a build system for starters. Uh, that much, I hope most of you already know. Uh, it's for C and C++ specifically. Um, and it allows you to, using a scripting language, define how you want to compile all of your code. It generates make files. And then the make files do all the actual compiling. So uh, if you remember from systems uh, writing a make file, CMake was born out of people hating writing make files. And so they made CMake, which is cross-platform make, to run make better. <coughs> um, and basically, um, to understand why you want CMake, uh, you should probably think about what you do if you don't have CMake. So if you just give, like, if I just give you like a shell, a compiler, and some code, like, would you know what to do, right? Like, I mean, can you guys actually? Would you guys actually be able to? Make a, make a library or make an executable? No. OK. Well, the basic process, I mean, fundamentally, it all comes down to just calling the compiler with a bunch of flags and a bunch of source files. And you do these magical compiler incantations in the right order, and you get your result. I mean, really, you could just do it all by hand if you knew everything you needed to know about how to call the compiler. You could write all these things, and as long as you called them in the right order, and it would be a ton of, ton of commands, like, I mean, tens or dozens of commands, but you could do it. But you don't want to because it sucks. So instead, you write a make file. <coughs> um, this is like a basic, trivial example of a make file. You're building a executable and a library, and you have two source files, um, and make will like manage the dependency. Uh, so if you change main.cpp and call make again, it will rebuild your things. Um, but that's basically all it does. Um, it's language agnostic. It doesn't know about C or C++. It just knows commands and file timestamps. Uh, and that's it. So when you try to do this for like a real serious project or like a large project, it gets unmanageable. You get make files that are really gross and hard to write and read. Um, whereas CMake offers like a real scripting language, it offers globbing, so like the asterisks and wildcards you, you're familiar with from the command line. Um, a cache does a bunch of other things. It understands packages and dependencies much better. So make just again, it's literally just a list of commands. Um, CMake allows you to have packages and projects and installation and tracking dependencies and stuff. So um, it's basically make on steroids, which is why it directly generates make files. Um, OK, I'm going to skip over these. I guess we could go back to them at the end. Um, but I'm also going to email out these slides so you can look at them later if you're curious. Because um, I was trying to keep this to 15 minutes of presentation so we could just have questions and stuff after. So uh, let's get into the code example. So basically, we're just going to do like the bare bones minimalist CMake, which I feel is super useful because most people have only ever seen big, complicated CMakes. Like, when was the last time you saw CMake that was four lines? Never? Anybody? Probably, if you saw it, it probably just contained a bunch of lines that said add subdirectory. And that was probably it. Um, but we're going to do like a, a much, much, much simpler example. Um, if you want, you can download the code. Um, it's just a repo on my GitHub. Um, that's the URL. Uh, is anyone actually doing that? Yeah. OK, uh, let me know when you've typed it in. Um, this is just you to like look at it. And then I think at the end, we're going to have some time to like actually write some code. So you can like type along if you want. Uh, cool. But don't get too distracted with that. <coughs> I'll, I'll be showing it all up on here, too. Got it? I'm good. Sheen. Yeah. Do you have it? Yeah, I got the URL. Oh, OK, great. All right. So 
Then we're done here. Uh, what do I want to do? OK. Uh, allow me to resize this. Uh, I'm sorry, the screen is going to get incorrectly sized, but uh, that way I don't have to be like looking up at it all the time. OK. Uh, don't worry, I'll make the things big so we can see everything. OK, so everyone can read that fine? Uh, Alex, can you check uh, if it's readable on the camera? Um, the colors make it a little hard, actually. Um, OK. Uh, bigger? Can you make a white background on your camera instead? Oh. <laughs> it's just the purple and the, and the black are like, indistinguishable. That, like. Oh, no, no, this is a bad idea. Every, this is going to take way too long. Okay. Um, if, if I make it bigger, does that help at all? Uh, or do I just, can you move it? No, I can't move it closer. Can you? Can you move it closer? A little bit. If we're just the text. Ooh. I should have checked that text was readable beforehand. I think I messed up the height. <laughs> That's worse. <laughs> okay, like right there is good. <laughs> just like yeah. I'll, I'll just start talking okay. while you ex while you fix that. Um, all right. So basically, we have um, we're gonna look at how to make a bare bones CMake project. Um, that's what square root is. It's literally just a library and an executable and other stuff. Um, it just computes the square root. Um, so we've got uh, square root.cpp and cl square root.cpp. Um, this is just a wrapper around the square root function. Don't worry about it. It's just code. Um, but we're going to make this into a library. So we have one library and we have an executable, which is what cl square root is. Uh, you just like enter a number and it prints the square root. Um, but the point is, we want to make one library, one executable. And uh, you can look at, basically, this CMakeList file is going gonna, is gonna to explain it all. So I've already written all this stuff, um, but we're going like, to add to it. I'm going like, to uh, explain what each thing is. But all we really need to do what I just described there is this. So fundamentally, there's two lines of boilerplate. And then three lines of defining your build. So you have to say what the minimum CMake version required is. When in doubt, 2.8. 2.8 is like the oldest version that like operating systems will give you in your in their package managers. So just do 2.8. You're probably never going to need anything more than that. Um, but if you want, you can. Uh, and then the project name. So you always need those. And that's just like boilerplate. You have to write that. So then really, all that we need are these three lines to one, make a library, two, make an executable, and three, link that library to that, link that li executable to that library. So uh, do we know what, we, we all know what a library means, right? OK. Uh, so the function, the square root function, is in square root.cpp. And when we make that into a library, we get a lib square root dot a file, which has the, that function defined in it, and then the CL square root file, which has the main, and then we combine them. So fundamentally, all we have is, if we, all we have is, is these three lines. Let's just say that. And then we make dir build, which I've already done. You go to the build folder. Let me just remove anything that was here. OK, so you make your build, and then you do cmake, and then the path to the root cmake lists. So dot dot is not just a magic thing that you always put. Uh, it actually is a path. Some people don't know this. I've, I've like had to explain this to people. So the dot dot means the previous directory, right? So if I do ls dot dot, that's where my CMake list is that I want. So that's why I do CMake dot dot, not just because that's what you see everywhere on the internet. Um, it'll almost always be dot dot, because you usually just have your project with the CMake list in the root directory and then a build folder. But just so you know what happens. OK, so all this went correctly. Um, it, it's maybe worth explaining why there's all this output. But basically, CMake is 
trying to save you from hours and hours of debugging by making sure your compilers work. So it will check. Now, this normally doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? But like when you're doing embedded stuff or you're working with a bunch of different tool chains, this may save you. Uh, so like for example, it sees that user bin C++, which is the compiler that it found. Notice it found the compiler. I didn't have to tell it where to do that. So like CMake knows, it makes good guesses about things. Um, my compiler works, that's great. Um, but most important thing is this line. Build files have been written to this directory, which I'm currently in. So what did it generate? A uh, bunch of stuff. One, a make file. That makes sense, because that's the whole point of CMake, generates make files. And then all, this, all these three other things. Um, CMake install, kind of mysterious. Uh, CMake files, let's look in there. So OK, we see more make file things. Um, this is actually a makefile.cmake. That's a little bit weird. Um, we got this, you know, all these things that like probably none of you have ever bothered to figure out what they are, but they're in, they're in there. Whenever you do cmake, they're in there. Um, and then there's this cmake cache.txt. So it's really, I, I'm not going to do it now, but it's really worthwhile to go through and figure out what these things are because they're always super useful for debugging. Like when something goes wrong, look here, look at the generated files. Um, but really. All we just wanted is to generate or make files, and that happened. So we hit make, and boom. Two things happened. One, it built the library. Great. Two, it built the executable. Perfect. Let's run it. Yeah, it works. Um, so really, I mean, like, this is all you need. If you just want to build a thing, and you don't have, and you, know, you don't have like complex dependencies, you just like, you just want to compile a thing. This is like the hello world of CMake. Um, are there any questions about like maybe this, the, should I explain like the syntax or any questions about why this works or, or what we just did? Because this is like as simple as it gets in terms of CMake. OK. Um, the only thing I'll, worth mention, I'll, I'll mention is that like these names don't have to match. These are target names. So. This is the code. This source file obviously needs to match, um, and this obviously needs to. Oops, this obviously needs to match. These are the target names, um, and so I can change those um, and rebuild, and we'll build a different thing. Um, but it will still work because I made sure to change it here. So yeah, that's. I guess that's probably worth mentioning. Um, the other thing I wanted to show is so we have. If we go back to here, you'll see there's this, um, this hello world file. And it basically just prints hello world, but it has pound define. Um, if you were in make file world or embedded world and you just had your compiler and just doing your thing, you'd probably do something like, you know, when you wanted to build the debug version, you do like dash d debug or like dash debug or whatever and like your files, whatever. CMake gives you a lot better control um, over those kinds of things. Um, if you look in, The CMake file. Uh, this basically gives you that that control. So, what I've done is I, instead of having to pick one which I want to build, let's say I want to build both, um, I can build two executables with the same source code, just this one file, and I can give one of them this compiler definition which is French. And remember, that was, that was what we were if-defing here. So um, with that in mind, if I go to my build folder, notice I'm not typing CMake, and it all still works. This is a nice, nice magical feature. If you, so when CMake generates the make file, like this guy, uh, it generates a thing such that when you run make, it will be like, oh, did you change the CMake? Oh, well, then I have to rerun CMake, which you can see it did, because you see like this stuff. So this tells you it reran the CMake. So you don't even need to type CMake. Um, you can just type make, and it'll rerun CMake, and then rerun make. Um, but you can see now built these two things. So we can run hello world and hello world fr. And uh, that's how you do like compiler defines, other target specific options. Um, the point of this is to demonstrate that like you can do uh, 
per target customization. So if you want to build, this is not what you would use for dbuild versus release. There's a separate thing for that, which is CMake build type. Um, but you guys probably don't care about that. Um, but if you do have like pound defines in your code, which happens in a lot of embedded stuff, um, you know, you're all robotics people, so you, you've probably had, had to deal with pound defines. This is the correct modern CMake way to do it. Um, you might see other ways to do it on the wiki. Don't do that. They're bad. Um, one of the tips in the tip section I skipped is don't trust the wiki. It's very old and out of date. Um, but that's a cool thing you can do. And then the other um, thing I really wanted to highlight is um, something that you will probably come across in your Ross, Katkin, CMake stuff, which is dependencies. So right, make files and just compiling stuff by hand has no idea about dependencies. And so when you want to use code that someone else wrote, like most common example, OpenCV, right? Uh, how, how, does it, how does this work? When I, when I see on the CMake wiki or OpenCV wiki, when it tells me to write this, what, what does that do? How, do, how can that work? What, like, um, and, and the reason it works is because whoever wrote CMake did this correctly. It was more complicated when CMake did it, but here's like the basic minimal example, which is you as the author of a package make this CMake in, uh, config file so like your package dash config dot cmake. And then when someone installs your code, when you apt install OpenCV or you download it and do make install, it copies that file to the correct place according to the operating system that you're on, which cmake handles for you. Um, and then when someone else wants to use your code and they do find package, a name, it looks for that name dash config dot cmake in the whatever folders it's supposed to look at them. So, if you're relying on Eigen or like all the ROS stuff, all works that way. It's just hidden inside of the catkin dependency command. It's like a different command, but it's the same mechanism. So if there's ever a dependency that it can't find, you can intelligently debug it. So like for example, on Linux, um, well, maybe we should start with what that file contains because it's important to realize how simple it is. Okay, that's it. I mean, really, really, we only need these two. Um, and, and this one, this is like not actually used in this example project, but this is what you normally do. Basically, it just sets variables. It sets variables so that when the person imports your package with find package, they get those variables. So if I need to add OpenCV's include path, if I need to add the path of the header files to my include path, I get this variable that is package name underscore include dirs. That's not a rule, it's just a convention. Some packages violate it, OpenCV. Um, which does case, so, open, uh, so CMake stuff is case sensitive, and I don't know why I'm doing that. Uh, so C, OpenCV actually does this, which is horrible, but whatever. So most package maintainers will give you package name underscore include underscore ders, and that way you can add it to your include path so that when you want to build something that needs the open headers from OpenCV, that's how it finds it. So you don't have to know where OpenCV is. The person who makes your package knows, and that works because they know where it's installed, because it's also in the CMake. So I think this is brilliant, um, and uh, here's an example of how you do it for your library. So we have like a library and an executable, and then obviously like we need the headers too. So we're going to define these three variables. Uh, that says the name of my library, which I called square root. Actually, I changed it to my square root, but I changed it back, so now it's just square root. Uh, the name of the executable, which is CL square root, and then this square root include ders. Uh, and then all you need to do is call configure file, which just does like variable substitution. Um, and we can look at the output of that. Um, you can see it substituted this. So you can see this, this used to say current CMake list file, or CMake current list file, um, but now it has the actual path substituted in, so that's good. Um, but nothing else, nothing else changed because we didn't need anything else. Well, it, it expanded conf includers, but again, we're not really using that. So um, the point is, this is the file that gets installed to you, you know, when you install it. So if you do make, oh yeah, we already did that stuff. So if you do make install, um, it's going to complain because uh, I need, I would need to do sudo. Um, but you can see it's trying to copy things from the build folder to user local bin. So on Linux, this is where stuff goes. Like, there's going to be a lot of stuff here, but 
Like these are executables that have been installed. Um, Windows has other locations. So it'll probably do like C colon program files, the name of your project, bin, and then the stuff. Um, OS X, I think, has also user bin and user local bin. Um, but it's important to realize that like I can change that. Like I can do CMake dot dot and then say I want my CMake install path to be like my home directory. Oops. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh no, it's prefix path. I think. Yeah, I think it'll work. No. Oh, uh, that's what it is. Okay, and then when I do make install, you can see, uh, uh, what did I change? Oh, no. Uh, oh, I suck. I changed stuff late last night. That was a bad idea. OK, so this is the installing. So like it literally, is, so it's copying the library file, the executable file, and the header file, and most importantly, this square root config file to my home directory, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and if I want to do it globally, I could do that too. Um, so this is how you unset a variable, which is not a thing I learned only very recently, which is really nice. So if I do sudo make install, uh, it'll now be in. Oh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> that just that just installed things uh, in a place I don't want them. That's fine. I can delete them later. Okay, yeah. So so now these are in a place that if I was from another package, let's say this guy, HiPot, which ha 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 conveniently requires square root. Um, this, this can build depending on square root. So I'll emphasize, no hard-coded paths. No paths. Just like me as a package maintainer doing the right thing, setting my, you know, my, my CMake config on, on install, and then users have a good time. They can just do fine package and it'll just work. So if it doesn't work, that means whoever wrote your package, either one, didn't write one of these files, which boo. Or two, it's in the wrong place, which is almost always what happens. Um, so like, if you do this and it returns nothing, you're going to have a bad time. Um, like, you can find, uh, Lots, lots, that's, well, I barely, I barely have ROS installed in this computer. So you guys would probably have a lot more. But um, I think I have like ROS core basic minimum ultra lightweight. But um, you'll, you'll find these in your, in your ROS installs too. OK. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, I, I didn't go over these explicitly, but it's pretty simple. It just says, like, install this here, install this here. And so, like, these paths are relative to your CMake install prefix. So it was like, so when I did, like, slash user, slash bin, slash local, it's that slash these things, um, which are, like, pretty standard. Um, and what's nice is you don't have to change this when you run on Windows because, like, CMake will have a d default for CMake install prefix, which is, like, sensible. And so this will all still look reasonable in Windows. Hence, cross-platform make, CMake, cross-platform make, yeah. Um, OK, any questions about, mm, yep, that's the thing. Any questions about this example? Uh, I think it's pretty simple. Sweet, OK, so that's, that's what I've got prepared. I, I have more stuff I could talk about. But um, do you guys have other CMake related questions? Like not necessarily related to like th what I like the demonstration. But ho hopefully this gives you. Do you feel like this gives you like some more like basic understanding of CMake? Okay. Yeah. It, it, for you guys, it's going to be a little bit of bridging the gap between like super basic CMake and Ross Catkin, which is like this like huge monstrosity of 
things, abstractions built up on top of CMake. But um, it's manageable. And if you know like the basics, you can like debug more effectively, I feel. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's good. Cool, I don't have to go to that. Where's my cursor? All right. Um, if you guys want to go, you can go. Uh, or I can do some of the other stuff that I had. Like I can go over like my random five favorite teammate tips, which probably probably none of this will probably be super relevant to the stuff you're working on, but I still think it's uh, it's important to know. Um, no other no like general teammate questions. I mean, like, what do y'all want? I have things that I know that I can share, but I don't know what you want to know. Anything? Anything? Sure. All right, cool. We're going to do, let's bring this back. Wait. Oh, I changed the, oh, I can go back to the uh, not gross looking uh, output format. No, is it three? That's three. Uh. Okay. All right. Five senior tips. Um, these are some of these are kind of advanced, but um, I think they're pretty important. So one is to be careful about the wiki. So there's this thing, which is like, uh, it, when you Google CMake questions, it's usually only like the second result, um, because Stack Overflow is almost always the first result. And that's fine, because the CMake wiki uh, is unfortunately not a great example of open source main maintenance. Um, it's very out of date. So it will tell you to do things that you should not do. Um, for example, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Uh, that overrides all of your compiler flags. They're just gone. And now it's only just this thing, which like for a small trivial project might be fine. And then you're going to try to like include uh, like, uh, like a Ross transport or something. And it's going to be like, which needs its own flags. Like it has flags that it defines uh, properly. And then you just, just nuked them. They're gone. So don't do that. But, that. but that's literally what's explained in this wiki tutorial. So don't do that. Um, but it's OK, because if you search CMake C++11, you'll get a Stack Overflow link first. So click that. Uh, here are two great examples of like really modern CMake things. You should pr probably do this. But if you want to be really hardcore, you can do this, which exactly uh, sets the compiler flags based on CMake's knowledge of your compiler to the flag that you need for the feature that you actually want, which is really all that you want. right? Like Really, you just want, like I want ranged for loops. OK? But you don't know maybe what flag that is in your compiler. CMake does. So you can tell it, I, just, I want this. And it will like, figure out the flag. So if you put like, uh, std thread, it'll give you, uh, or hmm, I might be wrong about that. If you pick a C14 feature, it'll make that C14 instead. Um, or you can just set globally, just like, give me all the 11 stuff. Um, and this is a link. This is insanely hard to find. This is the link of all, the, all of these things. Um, which is incredibly hard to find, but I found it um, for you. So you can CMake. look. I mean, honestly, so this should be like 3.10, but it's fine. You guys are probably running 2.8 anyways. Um, it doesn't matter. Just, yeah, that's the link if you want to look at it. Um, super useful. Uh, also, don't use these basically ever. They are, again, they do, like, they basically, all these things that I'm saying don't do are because they will, like, override other things or um, add, make things available that shouldn't be. Like, I'm trying to compile this thing, and I type include, and I want it to be this thing, but instead it becomes like this other thing, and all these other header files get in because you did include directories, which is like this global, like everybody gets this, even though that makes no sense. Um, like if you, if, for example, you have two things you're compiling for, like your laptop and like an ARM processor or whatever, and you have some header files that like should not compile for the ARM. If you do that and you put them in there, they'll be like, then you can include them in there, even though you shouldn't be able to. So don't do that. Um, with the exception of, in a lot of projects, you have like a top-level include folder, 
uh, that's like common code for everything. So like you could do it for that if you want. If like literally every target in your project is going to need those files, then okay, fine. But basically, don't do that. Never. I, I have no idea why you would use link directories. Uh, it sets the directories that it looks for libraries when you link. You almost never ever want to change that. Um, most of the libraries are going to be system libraries that you've installed. So they can be in slash user slash lib slash user slash local slash lib somewhere in there, which it will already look there, so you don't need to do that. If you have like another dependency, almost always you're going to be hard cutting a path in there, which then it won't work on anyone else's computer, so don't do that. There are much better ways, like with the proper package management things I was saying. So like usually you want to use like um, there's like target, there's target link directories. So if you somehow really need to set the link directories, you can do it for one target, which is probably what you want. Um, an example would be include or would